The Netherlands, informally Holland, is a country located in Western Europe with overseas territories in the Caribbean. It is the largest of four constituent countries of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. In Europe, the Netherlands consists of 12 provinces, bordering Germany to the east, Belgium to the south, and the North Sea to the northwest, with maritime borders in the North Sea with those countries and the United Kingdom. In the Caribbean, it consists of the three constituent countries Aruba, Curaçao, and Sint Maarten, together forming the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Further special municipalities, the islands of Bonaire, Sint Eustatius, and Saba. The country's official language is Dutch, with West Frisian as a secondary official language in the province of Friesland, and English and Papiamento as secondary official languages in the Caribbean Netherlands. Dutch Low Saxon and Limburgish are recognized regional languages, while Dutch Sign Language, Sint Romani, and Yiddish are recognized non territorial languages. The four largest cities in the Netherlands are Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague, and Utrecht. Amsterdam is the country's most populous city and nominal capital, while The Hague holds the seat of the state's general, cabinet, and supreme court. The port of Rotterdam is the busiest seaport in Europe. Amsterdam Airport Schiphol is the busiest airport in the Netherlands, and the third busiest in Europe. The country is a founding member of the European Union, Eurozone, G10, NATO, OECD, and WTO, as well as a part of the Schengen Area, and the Trilateral Benelux Union. It hosts several intergovernmental organizations and international courts, many of which are centered in The Hague, which is consequently dubbed the world's legal capital apostrophe. Netherlands literally means lower countries in reference to its low elevation and flat topography, with only about 50% of its land exceeding 1 meter above sea level, and nearly 26% falling below sea level. Most of the areas below sea level, known as polders, are the result of land reclamation that began in the 14th century. Colloquially or informally the Netherlands is occasionally referred to by the Pars pro Toto Holland. In the Republican period, which began in 1588, the Netherlands entered a unique era of political, economic, and cultural greatness, ranked among the most powerful and influential in Europe and the world, this period is known as the Dutch Golden Age. During this time, its trading companies, the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, established colonies and trading posts all over the world. With a population of 17.6 million people, all living within a total area of roughly 41,800 square kilometers, of which the land area is 33,500 square kilometers, the Netherlands is the 16th most densely populated country in the world and the second most densely populated country in the European Union, with a density of 526 people per square kilometer. Nevertheless, it is the world's second largest exporter of food and agricultural products by value, owing to its fertile soil, mild climate, intensive agriculture, and inventiveness. The Netherlands has been a parliamentary constitutional monarchy with a unitary structure since 1848. The country has a tradition of pillarization and a long record of social tolerance, having legalized abortion, prostitution, and human euthanasia, along with maintaining a liberal drug policy. The Netherlands abolished the death penalty in civil law in 1870, though it was not completely removed until a new constitution was approved in 1983. The Netherlands allowed women's suffrage in 1919, before becoming the world's first country to legalize same-sex marriage in 2001. Its mixed-market advanced economy had the 11th highest per capita income globally. The Netherlands ranks among the highest in international indices of press freedom, economic freedom, human development and quality of life, as well as happiness. In 2020, it ranked 8th on the Human Development Index and 5th on the 2021 World Happiness Index. Chapter 1 – Etymology The Netherlands' turbulent history and shifts of power resulted in exceptionally many and widely varying names in different languages. There is diversity even within languages. In English, the Netherlands is also called the Low Countries, whereas the term Dutch is used as the demonym, and adjectival form. Chapter 1 Section 1, 
Netherlands and the Low Countries. The region called the Low Countries have the same toponymy. Place names with Nida, Nida, Nedra, Nether, Lago or Low and Bass or Inferior are in use in low-lying places all over Europe. They are sometimes used in a deictic relation to a higher ground that consecutively is indicated as super, up, op, ober, boven, high, oat or hock. In the case of the Low Countries, Netherlands the geographical location of the lower region has been more or less downstream and near the sea. The geographical location of the upper region, however, changed tremendously over time, depending on the location of the economic and military power governing the Low Countries area. The Romans made a distinction between the Roman provinces of downstream Germania Inferior and upstream Germania Superior. The designation Low to refer to the region returns again in the 10th century Duchy of Lower Lorraine, that covered much of the Low Countries. But this time the corresponding upper region is Upper Lorraine, in nowadays northern France. The Dukes of Burgundy, who ruled from their residence in the Low Countries in the 15th century, used the term Les Pays de Pardeca for the Low Countries, as opposed to Les Pays de Pardella for their original homeland, Burgundy in present-day east-central France. Under Habsburg rule, Les Pays de Pardeca developed in Pays d'Embers, a deictic expression in relation to other Habsburg possessions like Hungary and Austria. This was translated as Nederland and in contemporary Dutch official documents. From a regional point of view, Nederland was also the area between the Meuse and the Lower Rhine in the late Middle Ages. The area known as Orberland was in this deictic context considered to begin approximately at the nearby higher located Cologne. From the mid-16th century on, the Low Countries and the Netherlands lost their original deictic meaning. They were probably the most commonly used names, besides Flanders, a pars pro toto for the Low Countries, especially in Romance language speaking Europe. The Eighty Years' War divided the Low Countries into an independent Northern Dutch Republic and a Spanish controlled Southern Netherlands. The Low Countries today is a designation that includes the countries of the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, although in most Romance languages, the term Low Countries is used as the name for the Netherlands, specifically. It is used synonymously with the more neutral and geopolitical term Benelux. Chapter 1 Section 2 Holland The Netherlands is also referred to as Holland in various languages, including English. However, Holland proper is only a region within the country that consists of North and South Holland, two of the nation's twelve provinces. Formerly they were a single province, and earlier the county of Holland, a remnant of the dissolved Frisian kingdom which also included parts of present-day Utrecht. Following the decline of the Duchy of Brabant and the County of Flanders, Holland became the most economically and politically important county in the Low Countries region. The emphasis on Holland during the formation of the Dutch Republic, the Eighty Years' War, and the Anglo-Dutch Wars in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, made Holland serve as a pars pro toto for the entire country, which is now considered informal or incorrect. Nonetheless, the name Holland is still widely used for the Netherlands national football team, including in the Netherlands, and the Dutch government's international website for tourism is holland.com. In 2020, however, the Dutch government announced that it would only communicate and advertise under the name the Netherlands in the future. Chapter 1 Section 3 Dutch The term Dutch is used as the demonymic and adjectival form of the Netherlands in the English language. The origins of the word go back to Proto-Germanic Theodiscas, Latinized into Theodiscus, meaning popular or of the people, akin to Old Dutch Deutsch, Old High German Dutch, and Old English Theodisk, all meaning the common people. At first, the English language used Dutch to refer to any or all speakers of West Germanic languages. Gradually its meaning shifted to the West Germanic people they had most contact with, because of their geographical proximity and for the rivalry in trade and overseas territories. The derivative of the Proto-Germanic word Theodiskas in modern Dutch, Dietz, can be found in Dutch literature as a poetic name for the Dutch people or language, but is considered very archaic. 
although it had a short resurgence after World War II to avoid the reference to Germany. It is still used in the expression Diets Mackin, to put it straight to him slash her or, more neutral, to make it clear, understandable, explain, say in the people's language in meaning vulgar, though not in a pejorative sense. Chapter 1 Section 4, Terminology in Dutch and Other Languages In Dutch, the names for the Netherlands, the Dutch language and a Dutch citizen are Nederland, Nederlands, and Nederlander, respectively. Colloquially, the country is also by the Dutch often referred to as Holland, although to a lesser extent outside the two provinces North and South Holland, where it may even be used as a pejorative term, for example Hollander in Maastricht. Since 1815, the plural Nederlanden is only used in the official name Koninkrijk der Nederlanden. In many other languages, the plural stuck, for example Nederlander, Pays Bas and Pais is Bahors. In Indonesian, the country is called Bilanda, a name derived from Holland. Chapter 2 History Chapter 2 Section 1 Prehistory The prehistory of the area that is now the Netherlands was largely shaped by the sea and the rivers that constantly shifted the low lying geography. The oldest human traces were found in higher soils, near Maastricht, from what is believed to be about 250,000 years ago. At the end of the Ice Age, the nomadic late Upper Paleolithic Hamburg culture hunted reindeer in the area, using spears, but the later Ansburg culture used bow and arrow. From Mesolithic maglamosian like tribes the oldest canoe in the world was found in Drenthe. Indigenous late Mesolithic hunter-gatherers from the Swifterbant culture were related to the southern Scandinavian Ertable culture and were strongly linked to rivers and open water. Between 4800 and 4500 BC, the Swifterbant people started to copy from the neighboring linear pottery culture the practice of animal husbandry, and between 4300 and 4000 BC the practice of agriculture. The funnel beaker culture, which is related to the Swifterbant culture, erected the dolmens, large stone grave monuments found in Drenthe. There was a quick and smooth transition from the funnel beaker farming culture to the pan European corded ware pastoralist culture. In the southwest, the same was Maan culture, which was related to the Vladingen culture, an apparently more primitive culture of hunter gatherers, survived well into the Neolithic period, until it too was succeeded by the corded ware culture. Of the subsequent bell beaker culture, several regions of origin have been postulated, notably the Iberian Peninsula the Netherlands and Central Europe. They introduced metalwork in copper, gold and later bronze and opened international trade routes not seen before, reflected in the discoveries of copper artifacts, as the metal is not normally found in Dutch soil. Numerous finds of rare bronze objects suggest that Drenthe was even a trading center in the Bronze Age. The Bell Beaker culture developed locally into the barbed wire beaker culture and later the Elk culture, a Middle Bronze Age archaeological culture having earthenware pottery of low quality as a marker. The initial phase of the Elk culture was characterized by tumuli that were strongly tied to contemporary tumuli in northern Germany and Scandinavia, and was apparently related to the tumulus culture in Central Europe. The subsequent phase was that of cremating the dead and placing their ashes in urns which were then buried in fields, following the customs of the urnfield culture. The southern region became dominated by the related Hilversum culture, which apparently inherited cultural ties with Britain of the previous barbed wire beaker culture. Chapter 2 Section 2 Celts, Germanic Tribes and Romans From 800 BC onwards, the Iron Age Celtic Holstadt culture became influential, replacing the Hilversum culture. Iron ore brought a measure of prosperity and was available throughout the country, including bog iron. Smiths traveled from settlement to settlement with bronze and iron, fabricating tools on demand. The King's Grave of Oss was found in a burial mound, the largest of its kind in Western Europe and containing an iron sword with an inlay of gold and coral. The deteriorating climate in Scandinavia around 850 BC further deteriorated around 650 BC and might have triggered migration of Germanic tribes from the north. By the time this migration was complete, Around 250 BC, 
a few general cultural and linguistic groups had emerged. The Norths C. Germanic in Gavones inhabited the northern part of the Low Countries. They would later develop into the Frisii and the early Saxons. A second grouping, the Visa Rhine Germanic, extended along the Middle Rhine and Visa and inhabited the Low Countries south of the Great Rivers. This group consisted of tribes that would eventually develop into the Salian Franks. Also the Celtic Latin culture had expanded over a wide range, including the southern area of the Low Countries. Some scholars have speculated that even a third ethnic identity and language, neither Germanic nor Celtic, survived in the Netherlands until the Roman period, the Iron Age Nordwest Bloc culture, that eventually was absorbed by the Celts to the south and the Germanic peoples from the east. The first author to describe the coast of Holland and Flanders was the Greek geographer Pythias, who noted in circa 325 BC that in these regions, more people died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. During the Gallic Wars, the area south and west of the Rhine was conquered by Roman forces under Julius Caesar from 57 BC to 53 BC. Caesar describes two main Celtic tribes living in what is now the southern Netherlands, the Manapii and the Eburones. The Rhine became fixed as Rome's northern frontier around 12 AD. Notable towns would arise along the Limes Germanicus, Nijmegen and Vorburg. In the first part of Gallia Belgica, the area south of the Limes became part of the Roman province of Germania Inferior. The area to the north of the Rhine, inhabited by the Frisii, remained outside Roman rule, while the Germanic border tribes of the Batavi and Canaanfates served in the Roman cavalry. The Batavi rose against the Romans in the Batavian Rebellion of 69 AD but were eventually defeated. The Batavi later merged with other tribes into the Confederation of the Salian Franks, whose identity emerged at the first half of the 3rd century. Salian Franks appear in Roman texts as both allies and enemies. They were forced by the confederation of the Saxons from the east to move over the Rhine into Roman territory in the 4th century. From their new base in West Flanders and the southwest Netherlands, they were raiding the English Channel. Roman forces pacified the region, but did not expel the Franks, who continued to be feared at least until the time of Julian the Apostate when Salian Franks were allowed to settle as Foderati in Tixandria. It has been postulated that after deteriorating climate conditions and the Romans' withdrawal, the Frisii disappeared as late in circa 296, leaving the coastal lands largely unpopulated for the next two centuries. However, recent excavations in Kenmoland show clear indication of a permanent habitation. Chapter 2 Section 3 Early Middle Ages After Roman government in the area collapsed, the Franks expanded their territories in numerous kingdoms. By the 490s, Clovis I had conquered and united all these territories in the southern Netherlands in one Frankish kingdom, and from there continued his conquests into Gaul. During this expansion, Franks migrating to the south eventually adopted the vulgar Latin of the local population. A widening cultural divide grew with the Franks remaining in their original homeland in the north, who kept on speaking Old Frankish, which by the 9th century had evolved into Old Low Franconian or Old Dutch. A Dutch-French language boundary hence came into existence. To the north of the Franks, climatic conditions improved, and during the migration period Saxons, the closely related Angles, Jutes and Frisii settled the coastal land. Many moved on to England and came to be known as Anglo-Saxons, but those who stayed would be referred to as Frisians and their language as Frisian, named after the land that was once inhabited by Frisii. Frisian was spoken along the entire southern North Sea coast, and it is still the language most closely related to English among the living languages of continental Europe. By the 7th century a Frisian kingdom under King Aldegisel and King Redbad emerged with Traectum as its centre of power, while Dorostad was a flourishing trading place. Between 600 and around 719 the cities were often fought over between the Frisians and the Franks. In 734, at the Battle of the Bourne, the Frisians were defeated after a series of wars. With the approval of the Franks, 
the Anglo-Saxon missionary will abroad converted the Frisian people to Christianity. He established the Archdiocese of Utrecht and became Bishop of the Frisians. However, his successor Boniface was murdered by the Frisians in Dockham, in 754. The Frankish Carolingian Empire modelled itself on the Roman Empire and controlled much of Western Europe. However, in 843, it was divided into three parts, East, Middle, and West Francia. Most of present-day Netherlands became part of Middle Francia, which was a weak kingdom and subject of numerous partitions and annexation attempts by its stronger neighbours. It comprised territories from Frisia in the north to the Kingdom of Italy in the south. Around 850, Lothair I of Middle Francia acknowledged the Viking Rorik of Dorostad as ruler of most of Frisia. When the Kingdom of Middle Francia was partitioned in 855, the lands north of the Alps passed to Lothair II and subsequently were named Lotharingia. After he died in 869, Lotharingia was partitioned, into Upper and Lower Lotharingia, the latter part comprising the Low Countries that technically became part of East Francia in 870, although it was effectively under the control of Vikings, who raided the largely defenseless Frisian and Frankish towns lying on the Frisian coast and along the rivers. Around 879, another Viking expedition led by Godfred, Duke of Frisia, raided the Frisian lands. The Viking raids made the sway of French and German lords in the area weak. Resistance to the Vikings, if any, came from local nobles, who gained in stature as a result, and that laid the basis for the disintegration of Lower Lotharingia into semi-independent states. One of these local nobles was Gerolf of Holland, who assumed lordship in Frisia after he helped to assassinate Godfred, and Viking rule came to an end. Chapter 2 Section 4, High Middle Ages The Holy Roman Empire ruled much of the Low Countries in the 10th and 11th century but was not able to maintain political unity. Powerful local nobles turned their cities, counties and duchies into private kingdoms that felt little sense of obligation to the Emperor. Holland, Hanau, Flanders, Gelre, Brabant, and Utrecht were in a state of almost continual war or in paradoxically formed personal unions. The language and culture of most of the people who lived in the county of Holland were originally Frisian. As Frankish settlement progressed from Flanders and Brabant, the area quickly became Old Low Franconian. The rest of Frisia in the north continued to maintain its independence and had its own institutions, which resented the imposition of the feudal system. Around 1000 AD, due to several agricultural developments, the economy started to develop at a fast pace, and the higher productivity allowed workers to farm more land or to become tradesmen. Towns grew around monasteries and castles, and a mercantile middle class began to develop in these urban areas, especially in Flanders and later also Brabant. Wealthy cities started to buy certain privileges for themselves from the sovereign. In practice, this meant that Bruges and Antwerp became quasi-independent republics in their own right and would later develop into some of the most important cities and ports in Europe. Around 1100 AD, farmers from Flanders and Utrecht began draining and cultivating uninhabited swampy land in the western Netherlands, making the emergence of the County of Holland as the center of power possible. The title of Count of Holland was fought over in the Hook and Cod Wars between 1350 and 1490. The Cod faction consisted of the more progressive cities, while the Hook faction consisted of the conservative noblemen. These noblemen invited the Duke Philip the Good of Burgundy, who was also Count of Flanders, to conquer Holland. Chapter 2 Section 5, Burgundian, Habsburg and Spanish Habsburg Netherlands most of the imperial and French fiefs in what is now the Netherlands and Belgium, were united in a personal union by Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, in 1433. The House of Valois Burgundy and their Habsburg heirs would rule the Low Countries in the period from 1384 to 1581. Before the Burgundian Union, the Dutch identified themselves by the town they lived in or their local duchy or county. The Burgundian period is when the road to nationhood began. 
The new rulers defended Dutch trading interests, which then developed rapidly. The fleets of the County of Holland defeated the fleets of the Hanseatic League several times. Amsterdam grew and in the 15th century became the primary trading port in Europe for grain from the Baltic region. Amsterdam distributed grain to the major cities of Belgium, northern France, and England. This trade was vital because Holland could no longer produce enough grain to feed itself. Land drainage had caused the peat of the former wetlands to reduce to a level that was too low for drainage to be maintained. Under Habsburg Charles V, ruler of the Holy Roman Empire and King of Spain, all fiefs in the current Netherlands region were united into the 17 provinces, which also included most of present-day Belgium, Luxembourg, and some adjacent land in what is now France and Germany. In 1568, under Philip II, the Eighty Years' War between the provinces and their Spanish ruler began. The level of ferocity exhibited by both sides can be gleaned from a Dutch chronicler's report. On more than one occasion men were seen hanging their own brothers, who had been taken prisoners in the enemy's ranks. A Spaniard had ceased to be human in their eyes. On one occasion, a surgeon at Via cut the heart from a Spanish prisoner, nailed it on a vessel's prow, and invited the townsmen to come and fasten their teeth in it, which many did with savage satisfaction. The Duke of Alba ruthlessly attempted to suppress the Protestant movement in the Netherlands. Netherlanders were burned, strangled, beheaded, or buried alive by his blood council and his Spanish soldiers. Severed heads and decapitated corpses were displayed along streets and roads to terrorize the population into submission. Alba boasted of having executed 18,600, but this figure does not include those who perished by war and famine. The first great siege was Alba's effort to capture Haarlem and thereby cut Holland in half. It dragged on from December 1572 to the next summer, when Haarlemers finally surrendered on 13 July upon the promise that the city would be spared from being sacked. It was a stipulation Don Fadric was unable to honor, when his soldiers mutinied, angered over pay owed and the miserable conditions they endured during the long, cold months of the campaign. On 4 November 1576, Spanish Tercios seized Antwerp and subjected it to the worst pillage in the Netherlands' history. The citizens resisted, but were overcome, 7,000 of them were mowed down, a thousand buildings were torched, men, women, and children were slaughtered in a delirium of blood by soldiers crying, Santiago. A Spaniard. A Sangre, a Carni, a Fuego, a Sacco. Following the sack of Antwerp, delegates from Catholic Brabant, Protestant Holland and Zeeland agreed, at Ghent, to join Utrecht and William the Silent in driving out all Spanish troops and forming a new government for the Netherlands. Don Juan of Austria, the new Spanish governor, was forced to concede initially, but within months returned to active hostilities. As the fighting restarted, the Dutch began to look for help from the Queen of England, but she initially stood by her commitments to the Spanish in the Treaty of Bristol of 1574. The result was that when the next large-scale battle did occur at Gembloo in 1578, the Spanish forces easily won the day, killing at least 10,000 rebels, with the Spanish suffering few losses. In light of the defeat at Gembloo, the southern states of the 17 provinces distanced themselves from the rebels in the north with the 1579 Union of Arras, which expressed their loyalty to Philip II of Spain. Opposing them, the northern half of the 17 provinces forged the Union of Utrecht in which they committed to support each other in their defense against the Spanish army. The Union of Utrecht is seen as the foundation of the modern Netherlands. Spanish troops sacked Maastricht in 1579, killing over 10,000 civilians and thereby ensuring the rebellion continued. In 1581, the northern provinces adopted the Act of Abjuration, the Declaration of Independence in which the provinces officially deposed Philip II as reigning monarch in the northern provinces. Against the rebels Philip could draw on the resources of Spain, Spanish America, Spanish Italy and the Spanish Netherlands. 
The Protestant Queen Elizabeth I of England sympathized with the Dutch struggle against the Spanish and sent an army of 7,600 soldiers to aid the Dutch in their war with the Catholic Spanish. English forces under the Earl of Leicester and then Lord Willoughby faced the Spanish in the Netherlands under the Duke of Parma in a series of largely indecisive actions that tied down significant numbers of Spanish troops and bought time for the Dutch to reorganize their defenses. The war continued until 1648, when Spain under King Philip IV finally recognized the independence of the seven northwestern provinces in the Peace of Munster. Parts of the southern provinces became de facto colonies of the new Republican Mercantile Empire. Chapter 2 Section 6 Dutch Republic After declaring their independence, the provinces of Holland, Zeeland, Groningen, Friesland, Utrecht, Overheysel, and Gelderland formed a confederation. All these duchies, lordships and counties were autonomous, and had their own government, the state's provincial. The state's general, the confederal government, were seated in The Hague and consisted of representatives, from each of the seven provinces. The sparsely populated region of Drenthe was part of the Republic too, although it was not considered one of the provinces. Moreover, the Republic had come to occupy during the Eighty Years' War a number of so-called generality lands in Flanders, Brabant, and Limburg. Their population was mainly Roman Catholic, and these areas did not have a governmental structure of their own, and were used as a buffer zone between the Republic and the Spanish-controlled southern Netherlands. In the Dutch Golden Age, spanning much of the 17th century, the Dutch Empire grew to become one of the major seafaring and economic powers, alongside Portugal, Spain, France, and England. Science, military, and art were among the most acclaimed in the world. By 1650, the Dutch owned 16,000 merchant ships. The Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company established colonies and trading posts all over the world, including ruling the western parts of Taiwan between 1624-1662 and 1664-1667. The Dutch settlement in North America began with the founding of New Amsterdam on the southern part of Manhattan in 1614. In South Africa, the Dutch settled the Cape Colony in 1652. Dutch colonies in South America were established along the many rivers in the fertile Guyana Plains, among them Colony of Suriname. In Asia, the Dutch established the Dutch East Indies, and the only western trading post in Japan, Dejima. During the period of proto-industrialization, the empire received 50% of textiles and 80% of silks import from the India's Mughal Empire, chiefly from its most developed region known as Bengal Subar. Many economic historians regard the Netherlands as the first thoroughly capitalist country in the world. In early modern Europe, it had the wealthiest trading city and the first full time stock exchange. The inventiveness of the traders led to insurance and retirement funds as well as phenomena such as the boom-bust cycle, the world's first asset inflation bubble, the tulip mania 1636-1637, and the world's first bear raider, Isaac Le Maire, who forced prices down by dumping stock and then buying it back at a discount. In 1672, known in Dutch history as the Rampjar, the Dutch Republic was at war with France, England and three German bishoprics simultaneously. At sea, it could successfully prevent the English and French navy from entering the western shores. On land, however, it was almost taken over internally by the advancing French and German armies coming from the east. It managed to turn the tide by inundating parts of Holland, but could never recover to its former glory again and went into a state of a general decline in the 18th century with economic competition from England and long-standing rivalries between the two main factions in Dutch society, the Republican Staatsgezinden, and the supporters of the state holder the Prinsgezinden as main political factions. Chapter 2 Section 7, Batavian Republic and Kingdom With the armed support of revolutionary France, Dutch Republicans proclaimed the Batavian Republic, modelled after the French Republic and rendering the Netherlands a unitary state on 19 January 1795. The state holder William V of Orange had fled to England. But from 1806 to 1810, 
The Kingdom of Holland was set up by Napoleon Bonaparte, as a puppet kingdom governed by his brother Louis Bonaparte to control the Netherlands more effectively. However, King Louis Bonaparte tried to serve Dutch interests instead of his brothers, and he was forced to abdicate on 1 July 1810. The Emperor sent in an army and the Netherlands became part of the French Empire until the autumn of 1813 when Napoleon was defeated in the Battle of Leipzig. William Frederick, son of the last state holder, returned to the Netherlands in 1813 and proclaimed himself Sovereign Prince of the Netherlands. Two years later, the Congress of Vienna added the southern Netherlands to the north to create a strong country on the northern border of France. William Frederick raised this United Netherlands to the status of a kingdom and proclaimed himself as King William I in 1815. In addition, William became hereditary Grand Duke of Luxembourg in exchange for his German possessions. However, the southern Netherlands had been culturally separate from the north since 1581, and rebelled. The south gained independence in 1830 as Belgium, while the personal union between Luxembourg and the Netherlands was severed in 1890, when William III died with no surviving male heirs. Ascendancy laws prevented his daughter Queen Wilhelmina from becoming the next Grand Duchess. The Belgian Revolution at home and the Java War in the Dutch East Indies brought the Netherlands to the brink of bankruptcy. However, the cultivation system was introduced in 1830, in the Dutch East Indies, 20% of village land had to be devoted to government crops for export. The policy brought the Dutch enormous wealth and made the colony self-sufficient. The Netherlands abolished slavery in its colonies in 1863. Enslaved people in Suriname would be fully free only in 1873, since the law stipulated that there was to be a mandatory 10-year transition. Chapter 2 Section 8 World Wars and Beyond The Netherlands was able to remain neutral during World War I, in part because the import of goods through the Netherlands proved essential to German survival until the blockade by the British Royal Navy in 1916. That changed in World War II, when Nazi Germany invaded the Netherlands on 10 May 1940. The Rotterdam Blitz forced the main element of the Dutch army to surrender four days later. During the occupation, over 100,000 Dutch Jews were rounded up and transported to Nazi extermination camps, only a few of them survived. Dutch workers were conscripted for forced labor in Germany, civilians who resisted were killed in reprisal for attacks on German soldiers, and the countryside was plundered for food. Although there were thousands of Dutch who risked their lives by hiding Jews from the Germans, over 20,000 Dutch fascists joined the Waffen-SS, fighting on the Eastern Front. Political collaborators were members of the fascist NSP, the only legal political party in the occupied Netherlands. On 8 December 1941, the Dutch government in exile in London declared war on Japan, but could not prevent the Japanese occupation of the Dutch East Indies. In 1944-45, the 1st Canadian Army, which included Canadian, British and Polish troops, was responsible for liberating much of the Netherlands. Soon after V Day, the Dutch fought a colonial war against the new Republic of Indonesia. In 1954, the Charter for the Kingdom of the Netherlands reformed the political structure of the Netherlands, which was a result of international pressure to carry out decolonization. The Dutch colonies of Suriname and Curaçao and dependencies and the European country all became countries within the kingdom, on a basis of equality. Indonesia had declared its independence in August 1945, and thus was never part of the reformed kingdom. Suriname followed in 1975. After the war, the Netherlands left behind an era of neutrality, and gained closer ties with neighboring states. The Netherlands was one of the founding members of the Benelux, the NATO, Euratom and the European Coal and Steel Community, which would evolve into the EC and later the European Union. Government encouraged emigration efforts to reduce population density prompted some 500,000 Dutch people to leave the country after the war. The 1960s and 1970s were a time of great social and cultural change, 
such as rapid depolarization characterized by the decay of the old divisions along political and religious lines. Youths, and students in particular, rejected traditional mores and pushed for change in matters such as women's rights, sexuality, disarmament and environmental issues. In 2002 the euro, was introduced as fiat money, and in 2010 the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved. Referendums were held on each island to determine their future status. As a result, the islands of Bonaire, St. Eustatius and Saba were to obtain closer ties with the Netherlands. This led to the incorporation of these three islands into the country of the Netherlands as special municipalities upon the dissolution of the Netherlands Antilles. The special municipalities are collectively known as the Caribbean Netherlands. In recent times, much of the Netherlands has seen a reclamation of land from what were once waterways. Chapter 3, Geography According to the Central Bureau of Statistics, the European Netherlands has a total area of 41,545 square kilometers, including water bodies, and a land area of 33,481 square kilometers. The Caribbean Netherlands has a total area of 328 square kilometers. It lies between latitudes 50 degrees and 54 degrees north, and longitudes 3 degrees and 8 degrees east. The Netherlands is geographically very low relative to sea level and is considered a flat country, with about 26% of its area and 21% of its population located below sea level, and only about 50% of its land exceeding 1 meter above sea level. The European part of the country is for the most part flat, with the exception of foothills in the far southeast, up to a height of no more than 321 meters, and some low hill ranges in the central parts. Most of the areas below sea level are man-made, caused by peat extraction or achieved through land reclamation. Since the late 16th century, large polder areas are preserved through elaborate drainage systems that include dikes, canals and pumping stations. Nearly 17% of the country's land area is reclaimed from the sea and from lakes. Much of the country was originally formed by the estuaries of three large European rivers, the Rhine, the Meuse and the Scheldt, as well as their tributaries. The southwestern part of the Netherlands is to this day a river delta of these three rivers, the rhine meuse scheldt delta. The European Netherlands is divided into north and south parts by the Rhine, the Val, its main tributary branch, and the Meuse. In the past, these rivers functioned as a natural barrier between fiefdoms and hence historically created a cultural divide, as is evident in some phonetic traits that are recognizable on either side of what the Dutch call their great rivers. Another significant branch of the Rhine, the Isel River, discharges into Lake Isel, the former Zuiderzee. Just like the previous, this river forms a linguistic divide, people to the northeast of this river speak Dutch Low Saxon dialects. Chapter 3 Section 1, Geology The modern Netherlands formed as a result of the interplay of the four main rivers and the influence of the North Sea. The Netherlands is mostly composed of deltaic, coastal and aeolian-derived sediments, during the Pleistocene glacial and interglacial periods. Almost the entire West Netherlands is composed of the rhine meuse River estuary, but human intervention greatly modified the natural processes at work. Most of the western Netherlands is below sea level due to the human process of turning standing bodies of water into usable land, a polder. In the east of the Netherlands, remains are found of the last ice age, which ended approximately 10,000 years ago. As the continental ice sheet moved in from the north, it pushed moraine forward. The ice sheet halted as it covered the eastern half of the Netherlands. After the Ice Age ended, the moraine remained in the form of a long hill line. The cities of Arnhem and Nijmegen are built upon these hills. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Floods Over the centuries, the Dutch coastline has changed considerably, as a result of natural disasters and human intervention. On 14 December 1287, St. Lucia's flood affected the Netherlands and Germany, killing more than 50,000 people in one of the most destructive floods in recorded history. 
the St. Elizabeth flood of 1421 and the mismanagement in its aftermath destroyed a newly reclaimed polder, replacing it with the 72 square kilometers Beesbosch tidal floodplains in the south center. The huge North Sea flood of early February 1953 caused the collapse of several dikes in the southwest of the Netherlands, more than 1,800 people drowned in the flood. The Dutch government subsequently instituted a large-scale program, the Delta Works, to protect the country against future flooding, which was completed over a period of more than 30 years. The impact of disasters was, to an extent, increased through human activity. Relatively high-lying swampland was drained to be used as farmland. The drainage caused the fertile peat to contract and ground levels to drop, upon which groundwater levels were lowered to compensate for the drop in ground level, causing the underlying peat to contract further. Additionally, until the 19th century peat was mined, dried, and used for fuel, further exacerbating the problem. Centuries of extensive and poorly controlled peat extraction lowered an already low land surface by several meters. Even in flooded areas, peat extraction continued through turf dredging. Because of the flooding farming was difficult, which encouraged foreign trade, the result of which was that the Dutch were involved in world affairs since the early 14th-15th century. To guard against floods, a series of defenses against the water were contrived. In the first millennium AD, villages and farmhouses were built on man-made hills called terps. Later, these terps were connected by dikes. In the 12th century, local government agencies called Waterschappen or Hugim Rauschappen started to appear, whose job it was to maintain the water level, and to protect a region from floods, these agencies continue to exist. As the ground level dropped, the dikes by necessity grew and merged into an integrated system. By the 13th century windmills had come into use to pump water out of areas below sea level. The windmills were later used to drain lakes, creating the famous polders. In 1932 the Asloutijk was completed, blocking the former Zuidersee from the North Sea and thus creating the Iselmeer. It became part of the larger Zuidizi works in which four polders totaling 2,500 square kilometers were reclaimed from the sea. The Netherlands is one of the countries that may suffer most from climate change. Not only is the rising sea a problem, but erratic weather patterns may cause the rivers to overflow. Chapter 3 Section 3, Delta Works After the 1953 disaster, the Delta Works was constructed, which is a comprehensive set of civil works throughout the Dutch coast. The project started in 1958, and was largely completed in 1997 with the completion of the Meislandkering. Since then, new projects have been periodically started to renovate, and renew the Delta Works. The main goal of the Delta project was to reduce the risk of flooding in South Holland and Zeeland to once per 10,000 years. This was achieved by raising 3,000 km of outer sea dikes and 10,000 km of the inner, canal, and river dikes, and by closing off the sea estuaries of the Zeeland province. New risk assessments occasionally show problems requiring additional Delta Project dike reinforcements. The Delta Project is considered by the American Society of Civil Engineers as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. It is anticipated that global warming in the 21st century will result in a rise in sea level. The Netherlands is actively preparing for a sea level rise. A politically neutral Delta Commission has formulated an action plan to cope with a sea level rise of 1.10 meters and a simultaneous land height decline of 10 centimeters. The plan encompasses the reinforcement of the existing coastal defenses like dikes and dunes with 1.30 meters of additional flood protection. Climate change will not only threaten the Netherlands from the seaside but could also alter rainfall patterns and river runoff. To protect the country from river flooding, another program is already being executed. The room for the river plan grants more flow space to rivers, protects the major populated areas and allows for periodic flooding of indefensible lands. The few residents who lived in these called overflow areas have been moved to higher ground, 
with some of that ground having been raised above anticipated flood levels. Chapter 3 Section 4, Climate The predominant wind direction in the European Netherlands is southwest, which causes a mild maritime climate, with moderately warm summers and cool winters, and typically high humidity. This is especially true close to the Dutch coastline, where the difference in temperature between summer and winter, as well as between day and night is noticeably smaller than it is in the southeast of the country. Ice days, maximum temperature below zero degrees Celsius, usually occur from December until February, with the occasional rare ice day prior to or after that period. Freezing days, minimum temperature below zero degrees Celsius, occur much more often, usually ranging from mid-November to late March, but not rarely measured as early as mid-October and as late as mid-May. If one chooses the height of measurement to be 10 cm above ground instead of 150 cm, one may even find such temperatures in the middle of the summer. On average, snow can occur from November to April but sometimes occurs in May or October too. Warm days, maximum temperature above 20 degrees Celsius, are usually found in April to October, but in some parts of the country these warm days can also occur in March, or even sometimes in November or February. Summer days, maximum temperature above 25 degrees Celsius, are usually measured in the built from May until September, tropical days, maximum temperature above 30 degrees Celsius, are rare and usually occur only in June to August. Precipitation throughout the year is distributed relatively equally each month. Summer and autumn months tend to gather a little more precipitation than the other months, mainly because of the intensity of the rainfall rather than the frequency of rain days. The number of sunshine hours is affected by the fact that because of the geographical latitude, the length of the days varies between barely 8 hours in December and nearly 17 hours in June. The following table are based on mean measurements by the KNMI weather station in De Bilt between 1991 and 2020. The highest recorded temperature was reached on 25 July 2019 in Gilza region. Chapter 3 Section 4 Subsection 2 Climate Change Chapter 3 Section 5 Nature The Netherlands has 20 national parks and hundreds of other nature reserves, that include lakes, heathland, woods, dunes, and other habitats. Most of these are owned by Starsbysby here the National Department for Forestry and Nature Conservation and Nature Monumentin, a private organization that buys, protects and manages nature reserves. The Dutch part of the Warden Sea in the north, with its tile flats and wetlands, is rich in biological diversity, and was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Nature Site in 2009. The Oosterschelde, Formerly the northeast estuary of the River Skelt was designated a national park in 2002, thereby making it the largest national park in the Netherlands at an area of 370 square kilometers. It consists primarily of the salt waters of the Oosterschelde but also includes mudflats, meadows, and shoals. Because of the large variety of sea life, including unique regional species, the park is popular with scuba divers. Other activities include sailing, fishing, cycling, and bird watching. Phytogeographically, the European Netherlands is shared between the Atlantic European and Central European provinces of the Circumboreal region within the Boreal Kingdom. According to the World Wide Fund for Nature, the European territory of the Netherlands belongs to the ecoregion of Atlantic mixed forests. In 1871, the last old original natural woods were cut down, and most woods today are planted monocultures of trees like Scots pine and trees that are not native to the Netherlands. These woods were planted on anthropogenic heaths and sand drifts. The Netherlands had a 2019 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 0. 6 tenths, ranking it 169th globally out of 172 countries. The number of flying insects in the Netherlands has dropped by 75% since the 1990s. Chapter 3 Section 6, Caribbean Islands In the Lesser Antilles Islands of the Caribbean, the territories of Curaçao, 
Aruba and Sint Maarten have a constituent country status within the wider Kingdom of the Netherlands. Another three territories which make up the Caribbean Netherlands are designated as special municipalities of the Netherlands. The Caribbean Netherlands have maritime borders with Anguilla, Curaçao, France, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Martin, the U.S. Virgin Islands and Venezuela. Within this island group, Bonaire is part of the ABC Islands within the Leeward Antilles Island chain off the Venezuelan coast. The Leeward Antilles have a mixed volcanic and coral origin. Saba and St. Eustatius are part of the SSS Islands. They are located east of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Although in the English language they are considered part of the Leeward Islands, French, Spanish, Dutch and the English spoken locally consider them part of the Windward Islands. The Windward Islands are all of volcanic origin and hilly, leaving little ground suitable for agriculture. The highest point is Mount Scenery, 887 meters, on Saba. This is the highest point in the country and is also the highest point of the entire Kingdom of the Netherlands. The islands of the Caribbean Netherlands enjoy a tropical climate with warm weather all year round. The Leeward Antilles are warmer and drier than the Windward Islands. In summer, the Windward Islands can be subject to hurricanes. Chapter 4 Government and Politics The Netherlands has been a constitutional monarchy since 1815 and due to the efforts of Johann Rudolf Thorbeck became a parliamentary democracy in 1848. The Netherlands is described as a consociational state. Dutch politics and governance are characterized by an effort to achieve broad consensus on important issues, within both the political community and society as a whole. In 2017, The Economist ranked the Netherlands as the 11th most democratic country in the world. The monarch is the head of state, at present King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands. Constitutionally, the position is equipped with limited powers. By law, the king has the right to be periodically briefed and consulted on government affairs. Depending on the personalities and relationships of the king and the ministers, the monarch might have influence beyond the power granted by the Constitution of the Netherlands. The executive power is formed by the Council of Ministers, the deliberative organ of the Dutch cabinet. The cabinet usually consists of 13 to 16 ministers, and a varying number of state secretaries. One to three ministers are ministers without portfolio. The head of government is the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, who often is the leader of the largest party of the coalition. The Prime Minister is a primus inter pairs, with no explicit powers beyond those of the other ministers. Mark Rutte has been Prime Minister since October 2010, the Prime Minister had been the leader of the largest party of the governing coalition continuously since 1973. The Cabinet is responsible to the bicameral Parliament, the States General, which also has legislative powers. The 150 members of the House of Representatives, the lower house, are elected in direct elections on the basis of party list proportional representation. These are held every four years, or sooner in case the cabinet falls. The state's provincial are directly elected every four years as well. The members of the provincial assemblies elect the 75 members of the Senate, the upper house, which has the power to reject laws, but not propose or amend them. Both houses send members to the Benelux Parliament, a consultative council. Chapter 4 Section 1 Political Culture Both trade unions and employers' organizations are consulted beforehand in policy making in the financial, economic, and social areas. They meet regularly with the government in the Social Economic Council. This body advises government, and its advice cannot be put aside easily. The Netherlands has a long tradition of social tolerance. In the 18th century, while the Dutch Reformed Church was the state religion, Catholicism, other forms of Protestantism, such as Baptists and Lutherans, as well as Judaism were tolerated but discriminated against. In the late 19th century this Dutch tradition of religious tolerance transformed into a system of pillarization, in which religious groups coexisted separately and only interacted at the level of government. 
This tradition of tolerance influences Dutch criminal justice policies on recreational drugs, prostitution, LGBT rights, euthanasia, and abortion, which are among the most liberal in the world. Chapter 4 Section 2 Political Parties Because of the multi-party system, no single party has held a majority in Parliament since the 19th century, and as a result, coalition cabinets had to be formed. Since suffrage became universal in 1917, the Dutch political system, has been dominated by three families of political parties, the strongest of which were the Christian Democrats, currently represented by the Christian Democratic Appeal, second were the Social Democrats, represented by the Labour Party, and third were the Liberals, of which the right-wing People's Party for Freedom and Democracy is the main representative. These parties cooperated in coalition cabinets in which the Christian Democrats had always been a partner, so either a centre-left coalition of the Christian Democrats and Social Democrats was ruling or a centre-right coalition of Christian Democrats and Liberals. In the 1970s, the party system became more volatile, the Christian Democratic parties lost seats, while new parties became successful, such as the Radical Democrat, and Progressive Liberal Democrats 66 or the Ecologist Party Grow and Links. In the 1994 election, the CDA lost its dominant position. A Purple Cabinet was formed by the VVD, D66, and PVDA. In the 2002 elections, this cabinet lost its majority, because of an increased support for the CDA and the rise of the right-wing LPF, a new political party, around Pim Fertoin, who was assassinated a week before the elections. A short-lived cabinet was formed by CDA, VVD, and LPF, which was led by the CDA leader Jan Peter Balkenende. After the 2003 elections, in which the LPF lost most of its seats, a cabinet was formed by the CDA, VVD, and D66. The cabinet initiated an ambitious program of reforming the welfare state, the healthcare system, and immigration policy. In June 2006, the cabinet fell after D66 voted in favor of a motion of no confidence against the Minister of Immigration and Integration, Rita Verdonk, who had instigated an investigation of the asylum procedure of Ayan Hirsiali, a VVD MP. A caretaker cabinet was formed by the CDA and VVD, and general elections were held on the 22nd of November 2006. In these elections, the CDA remained the largest party, and the Socialist Party made the largest gains. The formation of a new cabinet took three months, resulting in a coalition of CDA, PVDA, and Christian Union. On 20 February 2010, the cabinet fell when the PVDA refused to prolong the involvement of the Dutch army in Uyuzgon, Afghanistan. Snap elections were held on 9 June 2010, with devastating results for the previously largest party, the CDA, which lost about half of its seats, resulting in 21 seats. The VVD became the largest party with 31 seats, closely followed by the PVD with 30 seats. The big winner of the 2010 elections was Gert Wilders, whose right-wing PVV, the ideological successor to the LPF, more than doubled its number of seats. Negotiation talks for a new government resulted in a minority government, led by VVD in coalition with CDA, which was sworn in on 14 October 2010. This unprecedented minority government, was supported by PVV, but proved ultimately to be unstable, when on 21 April 2012, Wilders, leader of PVV, unexpectedly torpedoed seven weeks of austerity talks on new austerity measures, paving the way for early elections. VVD and PVD won a majority in the House of Representatives during the 2012 general election. On 5 November 2012 they formed the second Ruta cabinet. After the 2017 general election, VVD, Christian Democratic Appeal, Democrats 66 and Chris and Uni formed the third Ruta cabinet. This cabinet resigned in January 2021, two months before the general election, after a child welfare fraud scandal. In March 2021, centre-right VVD of Prime Minister Mark Rutte was the winner of the elections, securing 34 out of 150 seats. 
The second biggest party was the centre-left D66 with 24 seats. Gert Wilder's far-right party lost support. Prime Minister Mark Rutte, in power since 2010, formed his fourth coalition government, the fourth Rutte cabinet, consisting of the same parties as the previous one. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Government Chapter 4 Section 4 – Administrative Divisions The Netherlands is divided into 12 provinces, each under a king's commissioner. Informally in Limburg province this position is named governor. All provinces are divided into municipalities, of which there are 345. The country is also subdivided into 21 water districts, governed by a water board, each having authority in matters concerning water management. The creation of water boards actually predates that of the nation itself, the first appearing in 1196. The Dutch water boards are among the oldest democratic entities in the world still in existence. Direct elections of the water boards take place every four years. The administrative structure on the three Bess Islands, collectively known as the Caribbean Netherlands, is outside the twelve provinces. These islands have the status of open bear Lycoman. In the Netherlands these administrative units are often referred to as special municipalities. The Netherlands has several Belgian exclaves and within those even several enclaves which are part of the province of North Brabant. Because the Netherlands and Belgium are both in the Benelux, and more recently in the Schengen area, citizens of respective countries can travel through these enclaves without controls. Chapter 4 Section 5 – Foreign Relations The history of Dutch foreign policy has been characterized by its neutrality. Since World War II, the Netherlands has become a member of a large number of international organizations, most prominently the UN, NATO and the EU. The Dutch economy is very open and relies strongly on international trade. The foreign policy of the Netherlands is based on four basic commitments, to Atlantic cooperation, to European integration, to international development, and to international law. One of the more controversial international issues surrounding the Netherlands is its liberal policy towards soft drugs. During and after the Dutch Golden Age, the Dutch people built up a commercial and colonial empire. The most important colonies were present-day Suriname and Indonesia. Indonesia became independent after the Indonesian National Revolution in the 1940s following a war of independence, international pressure and several United Nations Security Council resolutions. Suriname became independent in 1975. The historical ties inherited from its colonial past still influence the foreign relations of the Netherlands. In addition, many people from these countries are living permanently in the Netherlands. Chapter 4 Section 6 – Military The Netherlands has one of the oldest standing armies in Europe, it was first established as such by Maurice of Nassau in the late 1500s. The Dutch army was used throughout the Dutch Empire. After the defeat of Napoleon, the Dutch army was transformed into a conscription army. The army was unsuccessfully deployed during the Belgian Revolution in 1830. After 1830, it was deployed mainly in the Dutch colonies, as the Netherlands remained neutral in European wars, until the Netherlands was invaded in World War II and defeated by the Wehrmacht in May 1940. The Netherlands abandoned its neutrality in 1948, when it signed the Treaty of Brussels, and became a founding member of NATO in 1949. The Dutch military was therefore part of the NATO strength in Cold War Europe, deploying its army to several bases in Germany. More than 3,000 Dutch soldiers were assigned to the 2nd Infantry Division of the United States Army during the Korean War. In 1996 conscription was suspended, and the Dutch army was once again transformed into a professional army. Since the 1990s the Dutch army has been involved in the Bosnian War and the Kosovo War, it held a province in Iraq after the defeat of Saddam Hussein, and it was engaged in Afghanistan. The military is composed of four branches, all of which carry the prefix Koninklijke. Koninklijke Marine, the Royal Netherlands Navy, 
including the Naval Air Service and Marine Corps. Koninklijke Landmacht, the Royal Netherlands Army. Koninklijke Lutmacht, the Royal Netherlands Air Force. Koninklijke Marechaussee, the Royal Marechaussee, tasks include military police and border control. The submarine service opened to women on 1 January 2017. The Corps Commando Troepen, the Special Operations Force of the Netherlands Army, is open to women, but because of the extremely high physical demands for initial training, it is almost impossible for a woman to become a commando. The Dutch Ministry of Defence employs more than 70,000 personnel, including over 20,000 civilians and over 50,000 military personnel. In April 2011 the government announced a major reduction in its military because of a cut in government expenditure, including a decrease in the number of tanks, fighter aircraft, naval ships and senior officials. The Netherlands has ratified many international conventions concerning war law. The Netherlands decided not to sign the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Chapter 5, Economy The Netherlands has a developed economy and has been playing a special role in the European economy for many centuries. Since the 16th century, shipping, fishing, agriculture, trade, and banking have been leading sectors of the Dutch economy. The Netherlands has a high level of economic freedom. The Netherlands is one of the top countries in the Global Enabling Trade Report, and was ranked the fifth most competitive economy in the world by the Swiss International Institute for Management Development in 2017. In addition, the country was ranked the second most innovative nation in the world in the 2018 Global Innovation Index. As of 2020, the key trading partners of the Netherlands were Germany, Belgium, the United Kingdom, the United States, France, Italy, China, and Russia. The Netherlands is one of the world's ten leading exporting countries. Foodstuffs form the largest industrial sector. Other major industries include chemicals, metallurgy, machinery, electrical goods, trade, services and tourism. Examples of international Dutch companies operating in Netherlands include Randstad, Unilever, Heineken, KLM, Financial Services, Chemicals, Petroleum Refining, Electronic Machinery, and Satellite Navigation. The Netherlands has the 17th largest economy in the world, and ranks 11th in GDP per capita. Between 1997 and 2000 annual economic growth averaged nearly 4%, well above the European average. Growth slowed considerably from 2001 to 2005 with the global economic slowdown, but accelerated to 4.1% in the third quarter of 2007. In May 2013, inflation was at 2.8% per year. In April 2013, Unemployment was at 8.2% of the labor force. In February 2019, this was reduced to 3.4%. In Q3 and Q4 2011, the Dutch economy contracted by 0.4% and 0.7%, respectively, because of European debt crisis, while in Q4 the Eurozone economy shrunk by 0.3%. The Netherlands also has a relatively low Gini coefficient of 0.326. Despite ranking 11th in GDP per capita, UNICEF ranked the Netherlands first in child well-being in rich countries, both in 2007 and in 2013. On the Index of Economic Freedom Netherlands is the 14th most free market capitalist economy out of 180 surveyed countries. Amsterdam is the financial and business capital of the Netherlands. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange, part of Euronext, is the world's oldest stock exchange and is one of Europe's largest bourses. It is situated near Dam Square in the city's centre. As a founding member of the Euro, the Netherlands replaced its former currency, the Gulden, on 1 January 1999, along with 15 other adopters of the Euro. Actual euro coins and banknotes followed on 1 January 2002. One euro was equivalent to 2.20371 Dutch guilders. In the Caribbean Netherlands, the United States dollar is used instead of the euro. The Dutch location gives it prime access to markets in the UK and Germany, 
with the port of Rotterdam being the largest port in Europe. Other important parts of the economy are international trade, banking and transport. The Netherlands successfully addressed the issue of public finances and stagnating job growth long before its European partners. Amsterdam is the fifth busiest tourist destination in Europe with more than 4.2 million international visitors. Since the enlargement of the EU large numbers of migrant workers have arrived in the Netherlands from Central and Eastern Europe. The Netherlands continues to be one of the leading European nations for attracting foreign direct investment and is one of the five largest investors in the United States. The economy experienced a slowdown in 2005, but in 2006 recovered to the fastest pace in six years on the back of increased exports and strong investment. The pace of job growth reached 10-year highs in 2007. The Netherlands is the fourth most competitive economy in the world, according to the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report. Chapter 5 Section 1 – Natural Gas Beginning in the 1950s, the Netherlands discovered huge natural gas resources. The sale of natural gas generated enormous revenues for the Netherlands for decades, adding hundreds of billions of euros to the government's budget. However, the unforeseen consequences of the country's huge energy wealth impacted the competitiveness of other sectors of the economy, leading to the theory of Dutch disease. Apart from coal and gas, the country has no mining resources. The last coal mine was closed in 1974. The Groningen gas field, one of the largest natural gas fields in the world, is situated near Slokteren. The exploitation of this field has resulted in 159 billion euros in revenue since the mid-1970s. The field is operated by government-owned Gasunni and output is jointly exploited by the government, Royal Dutch Shell, and Exxon Mobil through NAM. Gas extraction has resulted in increasingly strong earth tremors, some measuring as much as 3.6 on the Richter magnitude scale. The cost of damage repairs, structural improvements to buildings, and compensation for home value decreases, has been estimated at 6.5 billion euros. Around 35,000 homes are said to be affected. The Netherlands has an estimated 25% of natural gas reserves in the EU. The energy sector accounted for almost 11% of the GDP in 2014. Netherlands' economy, mainly due to the large shares of natural gas reserves, is considered to have very high energy intensity rating. The Netherlands is faced with future challenges as the energy supply is forecasted to fall short of the demand by the year 2025 in the gas sector. This is attributed to the depletion of the Netherlands' major gas field, Groningen, and the earthquakes that have hit the Groningen region. In addition, there is ambiguity surrounding the feasibility of producing unconventional gas. The Netherlands relies heavily on natural gas to provide energy. Gas is the main source of heating for households in the Netherlands and represented 35% of the energy mix in 2014. Furthermore, the European Union 2020 package enacted in 2009, has influenced the domestic energy politics of Netherlands and pressured non-state actors to give consent to more aggressive energy reforms that would reduce reliance on natural resources as a source of income to the economy. Therefore, a transition towards renewable energy has been a key objective by Netherlands in order to safeguard the energy security of the country from natural resources depletion, mainly gas. Netherlands has set a 14% renewable energy target of the total energy mix by the year 2020. However, the continuation of providing tax breaks to electricity generated by coal and gas, and to the exploration and extraction of gas from fields that are insufficiently profitable, renders a successful transition towards renewable energy more difficult to achieve due to inconsistencies in the policy mix. In 2011, it was estimated that the renewable energy sector received 31%, while the conventional energy sector received 69%, of the total energy subsidies by the government. Furthermore, the energy market in the Netherlands remains to be dominated by few major corporations Nguyen, RWE, E.ON, Enico, and Delta that have significant influence over the energy policy. 
Renewable energy share in the energy mix is estimated to reach 12.4% by the year 2020, falling 1.6% short of the 14% target. Chapter 5 Section 2 Agriculture and Natural Resources From a biological resource perspective, the Netherlands has a low endowment, the Netherlands' biocapacity adds up to only 0.8 global hectares in 2016, 0.2 of which are dedicated to agriculture. The Dutch biocapacity per person is just about half of the 1.6 global hectares of biocapacity per person available worldwide. In contrast, in 2016, the Dutch used on average 4.8 global hectares of biocapacity, their ecological footprint of consumption. This means the Dutch required nearly six times as much biocapacity as the Netherlands contains. As a result, the Netherlands was running a biocapacity deficit of 4.0 global hectares per person in 2016. The Dutch agricultural sector is highly mechanized, and has a strong focus on international exports. It employs about 4% of the Dutch labor force but produces large surpluses in the food processing industry and accounts for 21% of the Dutch total export value. The Dutch rank first in the European Union, and second worldwide in value of agricultural exports, behind only the United States, with agricultural exports earning 80.7 billion euros in 2014, up from 75.4 billion euros in 2012. In 2019 agricultural exports were worth €94.50 billion. One third of the world's exports of chilies, tomatoes, and cucumbers goes through the country. The Netherlands also exports one fifteenth of the world's apples. Aside from that, a significant portion of Dutch agricultural exports consists of fresh cut plants, flowers, and flower bulbs, with the Netherlands exporting two thirds of the world's total. Chapter 6 Demographics. The Netherlands had an estimated population of 17,493,969 as of the 30th of April 2021. It is the fifth most densely populated country in Europe, and except for very small city-states like Monaco, Vatican City, and San Marino, it is the most densely populated country in Europe and it is the 16th most densely populated country in the world with a density of 424 per square kilometer. It is the 67th most populous country in the world. Between 1900 and 1950, the country's population almost doubled from 5.1 to 10 million. From 1950 to 2000, the population further increased, to 15.9 million, though this represented a lower rate of population growth. The estimated growth rate in 2013 is 0.44%. The fertility rate in the Netherlands is 1.78 children per woman, which is high compared with many other European countries, but below the rate of 2.1 children per woman required for natural population replacement, it remains considerably below the high of 5.39 children born per woman in 1879. Netherlands subsequently has one of the oldest populations in the world, with the average age of 42.7 years. Life expectancy is high in the Netherlands, 84.3 years for newborn girls and 79.7 for boys. The country has a migration rate of 1.9 migrants per 1,000 inhabitants per year. The majority of the population of the Netherlands is ethnically Dutch. According to a 2005 estimate, the population was 80.9% Dutch, 2.4% Indonesian, 2.4% German, 2.2% Turkish, 2.0% Surinamese, 1.9% Moroccan, 0.8% Antillian and Aruban, and 7.4% others. Some 150,000 to 200,000 people living in the Netherlands are expatriates, mostly concentrated in and around Amsterdam and The Hague, now constituting almost 10% of the population of these cities. The Dutch are the tallest people in the world, by nationality, with an average height of 1.81 meters for adult males and 1.67 meters for adult females in 2009. The average height of young males in the Netherlands increased from 5 feet, 4 inches to approximately 6 feet between the 1850s until the early 2000s. 
People in the south are on average about 2 cm shorter than those in the north. According to Eurostat, in 2010 there were 1.8 million foreign-born residents in the Netherlands, corresponding to 11.1% of the total population. Of these, 1.4 million were born outside the EU and 0.43 million were born in another EU member state. On 21 November 2016, there were 3.8 million residents in the Netherlands with at least one foreign-born parent. On 1 January 2016, 26, 2% of persons aged 0 to 50 had at least one parent born in a foreign country. 11, 4% of persons aged 0 to 50 of Dutch background belonged to the third generation. Of these 739,000 had Western grandparents, 120,000 non-Western. The third generation constitutes from persons born from two second-generation immigrants or one second-generation immigrant and one person with a Dutch background. First and second-generation immigrants and the third generation were 34, 5% of the population aged 0 to 50. Over half the young people in Amsterdam and Rotterdam have a non-Western background. Dutch people, or descendants of Dutch people, are also found in migrant communities worldwide, notably in Canada, Australia, South Africa, and the United States. According to the United States Census Bureau, more than 5 million Americans claim total or partial Dutch ancestry. There are close to 3 million Dutch-descended Afrikaners living in South Africa. In 1940, there were 290,000 Europeans and Eurasians in Indonesia, but most have since left the country. The Randstad is the country's largest conurbation located in the west of the country and contains the four largest cities, Amsterdam in the province North Holland, Rotterdam and The Hague in the province South Holland, and Utrecht in the province Utrecht. The Randstad has a population of about 8.2 million inhabitants and is the fifth largest metropolitan area in Europe. According to Dutch Central Statistics Bureau, in 2015, 28% of the Dutch population had a spendable income above €45,000. Chapter 6, Section 1, Functional Urban Areas Chapter 6, Section 2, Language the official language is Dutch, which is spoken by the vast majority of the inhabitants. Besides Dutch, West Frisian is recognized as a second official language in the northern province of Friesland. West Frisian has a formal status for government correspondence in that province. In the European part of the kingdom two other regional languages are recognized under the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. The first of these recognized regional languages is Low Saxon. Low Saxon consists of several dialects of the Low German language spoken in the north and east of the Netherlands, like Twents in the region of Twente, and Drents in the province of Drenthe. Secondly, Limburgish is also recognized as a regional language. It consists of Dutch varieties of Moose Rhenish Franconian languages and is spoken in the southeastern province of Limburg. The dialects most spoken in the Netherlands are the Brabantian Hollandic dialects. Ripuarian language, which is spoken in Kerkrade and Vaals in the form of, respectively, the Kerkrade dialect and the Vaals dialect are legally treated as Limburgish as well, see Southeast Limburgish dialect. English has a formal status in the special municipalities of Saba and St. Eustatius. It is widely spoken on these islands. Papiamento has a formal status in the special municipality of Bonaire. Yiddish and the Romani language were recognized in 1996 as non-territorial languages. The Netherlands has a tradition of learning foreign languages, formalized in Dutch education laws. Some 90% of the total population indicate they are able to converse in English, 70% in German, and 29% in French. English is a mandatory course in all secondary schools. In most lower-level secondary school educations, one additional modern foreign language is mandatory during the first two years. In higher-level secondary schools, the acquisition of two additional modern foreign language skills is mandatory during the first three years. 
only during the last three years in VW01 foreign language is mandatory. Besides English, the standard modern languages are French and German, although schools can replace one of these modern languages with Chinese, Spanish, Russian, Italian, Turkish or Arabic. Additionally, schools in Friesland teach and have exams in West Frisian, and schools across the country teach and have exams in Ancient Greek and Latin for secondary school. Chapter 6 Section 3 Religion The population of the Netherlands was predominantly Christian until the late 20th century, divided into a number of denominations. Although significant religious diversity remains, there has been a decline of religious adherence. The Netherlands is now one of the most secular societies in the world. In 2019, Statistics Netherlands found that 54.1% of the total population declared itself to be non-religious. Groups that represent the non-religious in the Netherlands include Humanistisch Verbond. Catholics comprised 20.1% of the total population, Protestants. Muslims comprised 5.0% of the total population and followers of other Christian denominations and other religions comprised the remaining 5.9%. A 2015 survey from another source found that Protestants outnumbered Catholics. The southern provinces of North Brabant and Limburg have historically been strongly Catholic, and some residents consider the Catholic Church as a base for their cultural identity. Protestantism in the Netherlands consists of a number of churches within various traditions. The largest of these is the Protestant Church in the Netherlands, a united church which is Calvinist and Lutheran in orientation. It was formed in 2004 as a merger of the Dutch Reformed Church, the Reformed Churches in the Netherlands and a smaller Lutheran Church. Several Orthodox Calvinist and Liberal Churches did not merge into the PKN. Although in the Netherlands as a whole Christianity has become a minority, the Netherlands contains a Bible belt from Zeeland to the northern parts of the province over Heysel, in which Protestant beliefs remain strong, and even has majorities in municipal councils. Islam is the second largest religion in the state. In 2012, there were about 825,000 Muslims in the Netherlands. The Muslim population increased from the 1960 as a result of large numbers of migrant workers. This included migrant workers from Turkey and Morocco, as well as migrants from former Dutch colonies, such as Suriname and Indonesia. During the 1990s, Muslim refugees arrived from countries like Bosnia and Herzegovina, Iran, Iraq, Somalia, and Afghanistan. Another religion practiced is Hinduism, with around 215,000 adherents. Most of these are Indo Surinamese. There are also sizable populations of Hindu immigrants from India and Sri Lanka, and some Western adherents of Hinduism orientated new religious movements such as Hare Krishnas. The Netherlands has an estimated 250,000 Buddhists or people strongly attracted to this religion mainly ethnic Dutch people. In addition, there are about 45,000 Jews in the Netherlands. The Constitution of the Netherlands guarantees freedom of education, which means that all schools that adhere to general quality criteria receive the same government funding. This includes schools based on religious principles by religious groups. Three political parties in the Dutch Parliament are based upon the Christian belief. Several Christian religious holidays are national holidays. Upon the country's independence, Protestants were predominant in most of the country, while Roman Catholics were dominant in the South, especially North Brabant and Limburg. In the late 19th century, secularism, atheism and pillarization gained adherence. By 1960, Catholics equaled Protestants in number, thereafter, both Christian branches began to decline. Conversely, Islam grew considerably as the result of immigration. Since 2000 there has been raised awareness of religion, mainly due to Muslim extremism. The Dutch royal family has been traditionally associated with Calvinism, specifically the Dutch Reformed Church, which has merged into the Protestant Church in the Netherlands. 
The Dutch Reformed Church was the only major Protestant church in the Netherlands from the Reformation until the 19th century. Denominational splits in 1834 and in 1886 diversified Dutch Calvinism. In 2013, a Catholic became Queen Consort. A survey in December 2014 concluded that for the first time there were more atheists than theists in the Netherlands, while the remainder of the population was agnostic or atheistic. In 2015, a vast majority of the inhabitants of the Netherlands said they had never or almost never visited a church, and 59% stated that they had never been to a church of any kind. Of all the people questioned, 24% saw themselves as atheist, an increase of 11% compared to the previous study done in 2006. The expected rise of spirituality has come to a halt according to research in 2015. In 2006, 40% of respondents considered themselves spiritual, in 2015 this has dropped to 31%. The number who believed in the existence of a higher power fell from 36% to 28% over the same period. Chapter 6, Section 4, Education Education in the Netherlands is compulsory between the ages of 5 and 16. If a child does not have a starting qualification they are still forced to attend classes until they achieve such a qualification or reach the age of 18. All children in the Netherlands usually attend elementary school from ages 4 to 12. It comprises eight grades, the first of which is facultative. Based on an aptitude test, the eighth grade teacher's recommendation and the opinion of the pupil's parents or caretakers, a choice is made for one of the three main streams of secondary education. After completing a particular stream, a pupil may still continue in the penultimate year of the next stream. The VMBO has four grades and is subdivided over several levels. Successfully completing the VMBO results in a low-level vocational degree that grants access to the MBO. The MBO is a form of education that primarily focuses on teaching a practical trade or a vocational degree. With the MBO certification, a student can apply for the HBO. The HAVO has five grades and allows for admission to the HBO. The HBO are universities of professional education that award professional bachelor's degrees, similar to polytechnic degrees. An HBO degree gives access to the university system. The VWO has six grades and prepares for studying at a research university. Universities offer a three-year bachelor's degree, followed by a one- or two-year master's degree, which in turn can be followed by a four- or five-year doctoral degree program. Netherlands was ranked fifth in the Global Innovation Index in 2020, down from fourth in 2019. Doctoral candidates in the Netherlands are generally non tenured employees of a university. All Dutch schools and universities are publicly funded and managed, with the exception of religious schools that are publicly funded but not managed by the state, even though requirements are necessary for the funding to be authorized. Dutch universities have a tuition fee of about €2,000 a year for students from the Netherlands and the European Union. The amount is about €10,000 for non-EU students. Chapter 6, Section 5, Healthcare In 2016, the Netherlands maintained its number one position at the top of the annual Euro Health Consumer Index, which compares healthcare systems in Europe, scoring 916 of a maximum 1,000 points. The Netherlands has been among the top three countries in each report published since 2005. On 48 indicators, such as patient rights and information, accessibility, prevention and outcomes, the Netherlands secured its top position among 37 European countries for six years in a row. The Netherlands was ranked first in a study in 2009 comparing the healthcare systems of the United States, Australia, Canada, Germany, and New Zealand. Ever since a major reform of the healthcare system in 2006, the Dutch system received more points in the index each year. According to the HCP, the Netherlands has a chaos system, meaning patients have a great degree of freedom from where to buy their health insurance, to where they get their healthcare service. 
The difference between the Netherlands and other countries is that the chaos is managed. Healthcare decisions are being made in a dialogue between the patients and healthcare professionals. Health insurance in the Netherlands is mandatory. Healthcare in the Netherlands is covered by two statutory forms of insurance. Zorgazikarangswet, often called basic insurance, covers common medical care. Algemeen wet bizonia zectikossen covers long-term nursing and care. While Dutch residents are automatically insured by the government for AWBZ, everyone has to take out their own basic healthcare insurance, except those under 18 who are automatically covered under their parents' premium. If a person decides not to carry out an insurance coverage, the person may be fined. Insurers have to offer a universal package for everyone over the age of 18 years, regardless of age or state of health, it's illegal to refuse an application or impose special conditions. In contrast to many other European systems, the Dutch government is responsible for the accessibility and quality of the healthcare system in the Netherlands, but not in charge of its management. Healthcare in the Netherlands can be divided in several ways, three echelons, in somatic and mental health care and in cure and care. Home doctors form the largest part of the first echelon. Being referenced by a member of the first echelon is mandatory for access to the second and third echelon. The health care system is in comparison to other Western countries quite effective but not the most cost-effective. Health care in the Netherlands is financed by a dual system that came into effect in January 2006. Long-term treatments, especially those that involve semi-permanent hospitalization, and also disability costs such as wheelchairs, are covered by a state-controlled mandatory insurance. This is laid down in the Algemeen Wet Bizonia Zectikossen which first came into effect in 1968. In 2009 this insurance covered 27% of all health care expenses. For all regular medical treatment, there is a system of obligatory health insurance, with private health insurance companies. These insurance companies are obliged to provide a package with a defined set of insured treatments. This insurance covers 41% of all health care expenses. Other sources of health care payment are taxes, out of pocket payments additional optional health insurance packages and a range of other sources. Affordability is guaranteed through a system of income-related allowances and individual and employer-paid income-related premiums. A key feature of the Dutch system is that premiums may not be related to health status or age. Risk variances between private health insurance companies due to the different risks presented by individual policyholders are compensated through risk equalization and a common risk pool. The funding burden for all short-term health care coverage is carried 50% by employers, 45% by the insured person and 5% by the government. Children under 18 are covered for free. Those on low incomes receive compensation to help them pay their insurance. Premiums paid by the insured are about €100 Euros per month, with variation of about 5% between the various competing insurers, and a yearly deductible of €220. Euros. Chapter 7 – Transport Mobility on Dutch roads has grown continuously since the 1950s and now exceeds 200 billion km travelled per year, three quarters of which are done by car. Around half of all trips in the Netherlands are made by car, 25% by bicycle, 20% walking, and 5% by public transport. Chapter 7 Section 1, Road Transport With a total road network of 139,295 km, which includes 2,758 km of expressways, the Netherlands has one of the densest road networks in the world, much denser than Germany and France, but still not as dense as Belgium. As part of its commitment to environmental sustainability, the government of the Netherlands initiated a plan to establish over 200 recharging stations for electric vehicles across the country. The rollout will be undertaken by Switzerland based power and automation company ABB and Dutch startup Fastend, and will aim to provide at least one station within a 50-kilometer radius of every home in the Netherlands. Currently, 
The Netherlands alone hosts approximately 30% of all recharging stations in the European Union. Moreover, newly sold cars in the Netherlands have on average the lowest CO2 emissions in the EU. Chapter 7 Section 2 Public Transport About 13% of all distance is travelled by public transport, the majority of which by train. Like in many other European countries, the Dutch rail network of 3,013 km route is also rather dense. The network is mostly focused on passenger rail services and connects all major towns and cities, with over 400 stations. Trains are frequent, with two trains per hour on lesser lines, two to four trains per hour on average, and up to eight trains an hour on the busiest lines. The Dutch national train network also includes the HSL Zert, a high-speed line between the Amsterdam metropolitan area, and the Belgian border for trains running from Paris and London to the Netherlands. Chapter 7 Section 3 Cycling Cycling is a ubiquitous mode of transport in the Netherlands. Almost as many kilometers are covered by bicycle as by train. The Dutch are estimated to have at least 18 million bicycles, which makes more than one per capita, and twice as many as the circa 9 million motor vehicles on the road. In 2013, the European Cyclists Federation ranked both the Netherlands and Denmark as the most bike-friendly countries in Europe, but more of the Dutch than of the Danes list the bike as their most frequent mode of transport on a typical day. Cycling infrastructure is comprehensive. Busy roads have received some 35,000 kilometers of dedicated cycle tracks, physically segregated from motorized traffic. Busy junctions are often equipped with bicycle-specific traffic lights. There are large bicycle parking facilities, particularly in city centers, and at train stations. Chapter 7 Section 4 – Water Transport Until the introduction of trains, ships were the primary mode of transport in the Netherlands. And shipping has remained crucial afterwards. The port of Rotterdam is the largest port in Europe and the largest port in the world outside East Asia, with the rivers Meuse and Rhine providing excellent access to the hinterland upstream reaching to Basel, Switzerland, and into Germany and France. As of 2013, Rotterdam was the world's eighth largest container port handling 440.5 million metric tons of cargo annually. The port's main activities are petrochemical industries, and general cargo handling and transshipment. The harbour functions as an important transit point for bulk materials, and between the European continent, and overseas. From Rotterdam goods are transported by ship, river barge, train or road. The Volkerak Sluizen between Rotterdam and Antwerp are the biggest sluices for inland navigation in the world in terms of tonnage passing through them. In 2007, the Bituva route, a new fast freight railway from Rotterdam to Germany, was completed. The Netherlands also hosts Europe's fourth largest port in Amsterdam. The inland shipping fleet of the Netherlands is the largest in Europe. The Netherlands also has the largest fleet of active historical ships in the world. Boats are used for passenger travel as well, such as the water taxis in Rotterdam. The ferry network in Amsterdam, and the water bus network in Rotterdam are part of the public transport system. Chapter 7 Section 5, Air Transport Schiphol Airport, just southwest of Amsterdam, is the main international airport in the Netherlands, and the third busiest airport in Europe by number of passengers. Schiphol is the main hub for KLM, the nation's flag carrier and the world's oldest airline. In 2016, the Royal Schiphol Group airports handled 70 million passengers. All air traffic is international and Schiphol Airport is connected to over 300 destinations worldwide, more than any other European airport. The airport is a major freight hub as well, processing 1.44 million tons of cargo in 2020. Smaller international airports in the country include Eindhoven Airport, Rotterdam The Hague Airport, Maastricht Aachen Airport, and Groningen Airport Eelder. Air transport is of vital significance for the Caribbean part of the Netherlands, 
with all islands having their own airport. This includes the shortest runway in the world on Saba. Chapter 8, Culture Chapter 8 Section 1, Art, Architecture and Philosophy The Netherlands has had many well-known painters. In the Middle Ages Hieronymus Bosch, Petrus Christus, Lucas Gassel and Peter Bruegel the Elder were leading Dutch pioneers. During the Dutch Golden Age, spanning much of the 17th century, the Dutch Republic was prosperous and witnessed a flourishing artistic movement. This was the age of the Dutch masters, such as Rembrandt van Rijn, Johannes Vermeer, Jan Steen, Jacob van Roosdale, Gerard van Hunthorst, Theodor van Thulden and many others. Famous Dutch painters of the 19th and 20th century were Vincent van Gogh and the luminists Jan Sluijters, Leo Gestel, and Piet Mondrian. M. C. Escher is a well-known graphic artist. Willem de Kooning was born and trained in Rotterdam, although he is considered to have reached acclaim as an American artist. Literature flourished as well during the Dutch Golden Age, with Joost van den Vondel and P. C. Hooft as the two most famous writers. In the 19th century, Malta Tuli wrote about the poor treatment of the natives in the Dutch colony, the current Indonesia. Important 20th century authors include Godfried Bowmans, Harry Moolish, Jan Walkers, Simon Vestige, Hella S. Hasse, Cees Notabom, Gerard Rev, and Willem Frederick Hermans. Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl was published after she was murdered in the Holocaust and translated from Dutch to all major languages. Various architectural styles can be distinguished in the Netherlands. Over the years, various styles have been built and preserved. The Romanesque architecture was built between the years 950 and 1250. This architectural style is most concentrated in the provinces of Gelderland and Limburg. Limburg, in particular, differs greatly in architectural style from the rest of the Netherlands. The Gothic architecture came to in the Netherlands from about 1230. Gothic buildings often had large windows, pointed arches and were richly decorated. Brabantine Gothic originated with the rise of the Duchy of Brabant and spread throughout the Burgundian provinces. This architectural style is most concentrated in the province of North Brabant, such as St. John's Cathedral in Hertogenbosch, the Church of Our Lady in Breda and the Margraves Palace in Bergen op Zoom. What many know as traditional Dutch architecture is the Dutch Baroque architecture and classicism. These style of architecture is especially in evidence in the cities of North Holland, South Holland, and Zeeland. Other architectural styles that are common in the Netherlands are style Louis XIV, Art Nouveau, Rationalism, Neoclassicism. Expressionism, the style, traditionalism, and brutalism. The Netherlands is the country of philosophers Erasmus, Rudolf Agricola, and Spinoza. Much of Descartes' major work was done in the Netherlands, where he studied at Leiden University, as did geologist James Hutton, British Prime Minister John Stewart, US President John Quincy Adams, Physics Nobel Prize laureate Hendrik Lorentz and Enrico Fermi. The Dutch scientist Christian Huygens discovered Saturn's moon Titan, argued that light travelled as waves, invented the pendulum clock and was the first physicist to use mathematical formulae. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the first to observe and describe single-celled organisms with a microscope. Replicas of Dutch buildings can be found in House 10 Bosch, Nagasaki, Japan. A similar Holland village is being built in Shenyang, China. Windmills, tulips, wooden shoes, cheese, Delftware pottery, and cannabis are among the items associated with the Netherlands by tourists. Chapter 8 Section 2 Southern Netherlands In the south of the Netherlands there are some festivals that rarely or never occur in the rest of the Netherlands. These celebrations grew out of Catholic traditions, including carnival, lantern parades during the celebration of three kings, Brabantian Day and huge Blomenkorso. Blomenkorsos used to occur in many places in the Netherlands, but in the 21st century, Zundert and Valkensaard in North Brabant have taken the lead. Chapter 8 Section 3, Dutch Value System 
Dutch society is egalitarian, and modern. The Dutch have an aversion to the non-essential. Ostentatious behavior is to be avoided. The Dutch are proud of their cultural heritage, rich history in art and involvement in international affairs. Dutch manners are open and direct with a no-nonsense attitude, informality combined with adherence to basic behavior. According to a humorous source on Dutch culture, their directness gives many the impression that they are rude and crude, attributes they prefer to call openness. A well-known more serious source on Dutch etiquette is dealing with the Dutch by Jacob Vossestein, Dutch egalitarianism is the idea that people are equal, especially from a moral point of view, and accordingly, causes the somewhat ambiguous stance the Dutch have towards hierarchy and status. As always, manners differ between groups. Asking about basic rules will not be considered impolite. What may strike you as being blatantly blunt topics and comments are no more embarrassing or unusual to the Dutch than discussing the weather. The Netherlands is one of the most secular countries of Europe, and religion in the Netherlands is generally considered as a personal matter which is not supposed to be propagated in public, although it often remains a discussion subject. For only 17% of the population religion is important and 14% goes to church weekly. The Netherlands has a long history of social tolerance and today is regarded as a liberal country, considering its drug policy and its legalization of euthanasia. On 1 April 2001, the Netherlands became the first nation to legalize same-sex marriage. Chapter 8 Section 4, Dutch People and Ecology as of 2018 the Netherlands had one of the highest rates of carbon dioxide emissions per capita in the European Union, above those of Germany, France, and Belgium. In addition, the Dutch waste more food than any other EU citizen, at over three times the EU average despite this, the Netherlands has nonetheless the reputation of the leader country in environmental and population management. In 2015, Amsterdam and Rotterdam were ranked fourth and fifth, respectively, on the Arcadis Sustainable Cities Index. Sustainability is a concept important for the Dutch. The goal of the Dutch government is to have a sustainable, reliable, and affordable energy system by 2050, in which CO2 emissions have been halved and 40% of electricity is derived from sustainable sources. The government is investing billions of euros in energy efficiency, sustainable energy, and CO2 reduction. The kingdom also encourages Dutch companies to build sustainable business-slash-projects-slash-facilities, with financial aids from the state to the companies or individuals who are active in making the country more sustainable. Chapter 8 Section 5, Music The Netherlands has multiple music traditions. Traditional Dutch music is a genre known as Levenslied, meaning Song of Life, to an extent comparable to a French chanson or a German schlager. These songs typically have a simple melody and rhythm, and a straightforward structure of verses and choruses. Themes can be light, but are often sentimental and include love, death and loneliness. Traditional musical instruments, such as the accordion and the barrel organ are a staple of Levenslide music, though in recent years many artists also use synthesizers and guitars. Artists in this genre include Jan Smit, Franz Bauer, and André Hazes. Contemporary Dutch rock and pop music originated in the 1960s, heavily influenced by popular music from the United States and Britain. In the 1960s and 1970s the lyrics were mostly in English, and some tracks were instrumental. Bands such as Shocking Blue, Golden Earring, T-Set, George Baker selection and focus enjoyed international success. As of the 1980s, more and more pop musicians started working in the Dutch language, partly inspired by the huge success of the band Domar. Today Dutch rock and pop music thrives in both languages, with some artists recording in both. Current symphonic metal bands Epica, Delane, Revamp, The Gathering, Asrai, Autumn, Arian and Within Temptation as well as jazz and pop singer Caro Emerald are having international success. Also, metal bands like Hail of Bullets, God Dethroned, Itzagrim, Asphyx, Textures, Present Danger, Heidevolk and Slechtvalk are popular guests at the biggest metal festivals in Europe. 
Contemporary local stars include pop singer Arnouk, country pop singer Ilse de Lang, South Gelderish and Limburgish dialect singing folk band Rovenhadza, rock band Bluff and Ewa Nick and Simon. Trentio Oosterwies, one of the country's most well-known and versatile singers, has made multiple albums with famous American composers Vince Mendoza and Bert Bacharach. Early 1990s Dutch and Belgian house music came together in Eurodance Project 2 Unlimited. Selling 18 million records, the two singers in the band are the most successful Dutch music artists to this day. Tracks like Get Ready For This are still popular themes of US sports events, like the NHL. In the mid-1990s Dutch language rap and hip-hop also came to fruition and has become popular in the Netherlands and Belgium. Artists with North African, Caribbean or Middle Eastern origins have strongly influenced this genre. Since the 1990s, Dutch electronic dance music gained widespread popularity in the world in many forms, from trance, techno and gabba to hardstyle. Some of the world's best-known dance music DJs hail from the Netherlands, including Armin van Buren, Tiesto, Hardwell, Martin Garrix, Dash Berlin, Julian Jordan, Nicky Romero, W and W, Don Diablo, Umet Oscan, Sander Van Dorn and Afrojack, the first four of which have been ranked as best in the world by DJ Mag Top 100 DJs. The Amsterdam dance event is the world's leading electronic music conference and the biggest club festival for the many electronic subgenres on the planet. These DJs also contribute to the world's mainstream pop music, as they frequently collaborate and produce for high-profile international artists. The Netherlands have participated in the Eurovision Song Contests since its first edition in 1956, and have won five times. Their most recent win was in 2019. In classical music, Jan Swielink ranks as the Dutch most famous composer, with Louis Andriessen amongst the best-known living Dutch classical composers. Tun Koopman is a Dutch conductor, organist and harpsichordist. He is also professor at the Royal Conservatory of The Hague. Notable violinists are Janine Janssen and André Rieu. The latter, together with his Johann Strauss Orchestra, has taken classical and waltz music on worldwide concert tours, the size and revenue of which are otherwise only seen from the world's biggest rock and pop music acts. The most famous Dutch classical composition is Canto Ostinato by Simeon Ten Holt, a minimalistic composition for multiple instruments. Acclaimed harpist Lavinium, Mayer in 2012 released an album with works from Philip Glass that she transcribed for harp, with approval of Glass himself. The Concertgebouw in Amsterdam is home to the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, considered one of the world's finest orchestras. Chapter 8 Section 6 Film and Television Some Dutch films, mainly by director Paul Verhoeven, have received international distribution and recognition, such as Turkish Delight, Soldier of Orange, Spetters and The Fourth Man. Verhoeven then went on to direct big Hollywood movies like Robocop, Total Recall and Basic Instinct, and returned with Dutch film Black Book. Other well-known Dutch film directors are Jan de Bont, Anton Corbin, Dick Maas, Fons Rademakers, and documentary makers Bert Hanstra and Joris Ivans. Film director Theo van Gogh achieved international notoriety in 2004 when he was murdered by Mohamed Bouyeri in the streets of Amsterdam after directing the short film submission. Internationally, successful directors of photography from the Netherlands are Hoyt van Hoytema and Theo van de Sande. Van Hoytema went to the National Film School in Ludge and Van de Sande went to the Netherlands Film Academy. Internationally successful Dutch actors include Famke Janssen, Karis van Outen, Michael Hirschman, Rutger Hauer, Jeroen Krab and Derek de Lint. The Netherlands has a well-developed television market, with both multiple commercial and public broadcasters. Imported TV programs, as well as interviews with responses in a foreign language, are virtually always shown with the original sound and subtitled. Only foreign shows for children are dubbed. TV exports from the Netherlands mostly take the form of specific formats and franchises, most notably through internationally active TV production conglomerate Endemol, 
founded by Dutch media tycoons John de Mol and Duke van den Ende. Headquartered in Amsterdam, Endemol has around 90 companies in over 30 countries. Endemol and its subsidiaries create and run reality, talent, and game show franchises worldwide, including Big Brother and Deal or No Deal. John de Mole later started his own company Talpa which created show franchises like The Voice and Utopia. Chapter 8 Section 7 Sports Approximately 4.5 million of the 16.8 million people in the Netherlands are registered to one of the 35,000 sports clubs in the country. About two-thirds of the population between 15 and 75 participates in sports weekly. Football is the most popular participant sport in the Netherlands, before field hockey and volleyball as the second and third most popular team sports. The Netherlands national football team is one of the most popular aspects of Dutch sports, especially since the 1970s when one of the greatest footballers of all time, Johan Cruyff, developed total football with coach Renus Michels. Tennis, gymnastics and golf are the three most widely engaged in individual sports. Organization of sports began at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Federations for sports were established, rules were unified and sports clubs came into existence. A Dutch National Olympic Committee was established in 1912. Thus far, the nation has won 266 medals at the Summer Olympic Games and another 110 medals at the Winter Olympic Games. In international competition, Dutch national teams and athletes are dominant in several fields of sport. The Netherlands women's field hockey team is the most successful team in World Cup history. The Netherlands baseball team have won the European Championship 20 times out of 32 events. Dutch K1 kickboxers have won the K1 World Grand Prix 15 times out of 19 tournaments. The Netherlands women's handball team holds the record of the only team in the world that consecutively reached all six semi-finals of major international tournaments since 2015, winning silver and bronze at the European Women's Handball Championship and silver, bronze and gold at the World Women's Handball Championship. They finished fourth at the 2016 Summer Olympics. The Dutch speed skaters' performance at the 2014 Winter Olympics, where they won 8 out of 12 events, 23 out of 36 medals, including 4 clean sweeps, is the most dominant performance in a single sport in Olympic history. Motorcycle racing at the TT circuit Assen has a long history. Assen is the only venue to have held a round of the Motorcycle World Championship every year since its creation in 1949. The circuit was purpose-built for the Dutch TT in 1954, with previous events having been held on public roads. The Dutch have also had success in all three of cycling's grand tours with Jan Janssen winning the 1968 Tour de France, more recently with Tom Dumoulin winning the 2017 Giro d'Italia and legendary rider Duke Zua Tom Elk was the 1985 UCI world champion, the winner of the 1979 Vuelta a España, the 1980 Tour de France and still holds or shares numerous Tour de France records including most tours finished and most kilometers ridden. Max Verstappen currently races in Formula One, and was the first Dutchman to win a Grand Prix and was the first Dutchman to win a Formula One World Drivers' Championship. He was also the youngest driver to make his debut at the age of 17, and became the youngest race winner at the age of 18. The coastal resort of Zontfort hosted the Dutch Grand Prix from 1958 to 1985. The race returned to Zontfort for the 2021 season after major renovations, and was won by the Dutchman, Max Verstappen, becoming the first driver with a Dutch nationality to win the Dutch Grand Prix. The volleyball national men's team has also been successful, winning the silver medal at the 1992 Summer Olympics and the gold medal four years later in Atlanta. The biggest success of the women's national team was winning the European Championship in 1995 and the World Grand Prix in 2007. Recently cricket has made a remarkable progress in the Netherlands. Netherlands have participated in 1996, 2003, 2007 and 2011 ODI Cricket World Cup. 
They have also qualified for 2009 and 2014 T20 World Cup. In the 2009 T20 World Cup, Netherlands defeated England, the current world champions and inventor of the game. Ryan Ten Doskert is the only Dutch player to have played in the IPL on the team Kolkata Knight Riders. Chapter 8 Section 8 Cuisine Originally, the country's cuisine was shaped by the practices of fishing and farming, including the cultivation of the soil for growing crops and raising domesticated animals. Dutch cuisine is simple and straightforward, and contains many dairy products. Breakfast and lunch are typically bread with toppings, with cereal for breakfast as an alternative. Traditionally, dinner consists of potatoes, a portion of meat, and vegetables. The Dutch diet was relatively high in carbohydrates and fat, reflecting the dietary needs of the laborers whose culture molded the country. Without many refinements, it is best described as rustic, though many holidays are still celebrated with special foods. In the course of the 20th century this diet changed and became much more cosmopolitan, with most global cuisines being represented in the major cities. Modern culinary writers distinguish between three general regional forms of Dutch cuisine. The regions in the northeast of the Netherlands, roughly the provinces of Groningen, Friesland, Drenthe, Overheysel and Gelderland north of the Great Rivers are the least populated areas of the Netherlands. The late introduction of large-scale agriculture means that the cuisine is generally known for its many kinds of meats. The relative lack of farms allowed for an abundance of game and husbandry, though dishes near the coastal regions of Friesland, Groningen and the parts of Overheysel bordering the Iselmere also include a large amount of fish. The various dried sausages, belonging to the meatwurst family of Dutch sausages are found throughout this region and are highly prized for their often very strong taste. Also smoked sausages are common, of which rookwurst is the most renowned. The sausage contains a lot of fat and is very juicy. Larger sausages are often eaten alongside stampot, hotspot or zuurkool, whereas smaller ones are often eaten as a street food. The provinces are also home to hard-textured rye bread, pastries and cookies, the latter heavily spiced with ginger or succade or containing small bits of meat. Various kinds of crude cook, frisk dumps and speak dicken are considered typical. A notable characteristic of Fry's Roggerbrod is its long baking time, resulting in a sweet taste and a deep dark color. In terms of alcoholic beverages, the region is renowned for its many bitters and other high-proof liquors rather than beer, which is, apart from Geneva, typical for the rest of the country. As a coastal region, Friesland is home to low-lying grasslands, and thus has a cheese production in common with the Western cuisine. Fries Nigelkars is a notable example. The provinces of North Holland, South Holland, Zeeland, and Utrecht and the Gelderlandic area of Betuwe make up the region in which Western Dutch cuisine is found. Because of the abundance of water and flat grasslands that are found here, the area is known for its many dairy products, which include prominent cheeses such as Gouda, Leiden, and Edam as well as Leerdammer and Beemster, while the adjacent Zaanstreek in North Holland, has since the 16th century been known for its mayonnaise, typical whole grain mustards, and chocolate industry. Zealand and South Holland produce a lot of butter, which contains a larger amount of milk fat than most other European butter varieties. A byproduct of the butter making process, carne milk, is also considered typical for this region. Seafood such as soused herring, mussels, eels, oysters, and shrimps are widely available and typical for the region. Kibbling, once a local delicacy consisting of small chunks of battered white fish, has become a national fast food, just as Lekebeck. Pastries in this area tend to be quite doughy, and often contain large amounts of sugar, either caramelized, powdered or crystallized. The Alibol and Zeus Bolas are good examples. Cookies are also produced in great number and tend to contain a lot of butter and sugar, like Stroopwafel, as well as a filling of some kind, mostly almond, like Javolda Koek. The traditional alcoholic beverages of this region are beer and Geneva, a high-proof juniper-flavored spirit, 
that came to be known in England as gin. A noted exception within the traditional Dutch alcoholic landscape, Advocar, a rich and creamy liqueur made from eggs, sugar and brandy, is also native to this region. The southern Dutch cuisine consists of the cuisines of the Dutch provinces of North Brabant and Limburg, and the Flemish region in Belgium. It is renowned for its many rich pastries, soups, stews and vegetable dishes and is often called Burgundian which is a Dutch idiom invoking the rich Burgundian court which ruled the Low Countries in the Middle Ages, renowned for its splendor and great feasts. It is the only Dutch culinary region that developed an oat cuisine. Pastries are abundant, often with rich fillings of cream, custard or fruits. Cakes, such as the Vlei from Limburg and the Moorkop and Borsa Ball from Brabant, are typical pastries. Savory pastries also occur, with the Worsten Brugge being the most popular. The traditional alcoholic beverage of the region is beer. There are many local brands, ranging from Trappist to Creek. Five of the ten international Trappist Association recognized breweries in the world, are located in the southern Dutch cultural area. Beer, like wine in French cuisine, is also used in cooking, often in stews. In early 2014, Oxfam ranked the Netherlands as the country with the most nutritious, plentiful and healthy food, in a comparison of 125 countries. Chapter 8 Section 9 Colonial Heritage From the exploitations in the Mughal Empire in the 17th century, to the colonizations in the 19th century, Dutch imperial possessions continued to expand, reaching their greatest extent by establishing a hegemony of the Dutch East Indies in the early 20th century. The Dutch East Indies, which later formed modern-day Indonesia, was one of the most valuable European colonies in the world and the most important one for the Netherlands. Over 350 years of mutual heritage has left a significant cultural mark on the Netherlands. In the Dutch Golden Age of the 17th century, the Netherlands urbanized considerably, mostly financed by corporate revenue from the Asian trade monopolies. Social status was based on merchants' income, which reduced feudalism and considerably changed the dynamics of Dutch society. When the Dutch royal family was established in 1815, much of its wealth came from colonial trade. By the 17th century, the Dutch East India Company established their base in parts of Ceylon. Afterward, they established ports in Dutch-occupied Malabar, leading to Dutch settlements and trading posts in India. However, their expansion into India was halted, after their defeat in the Battle of Kalachal by the Kingdom of Travancore, during the Travancore-Dutch War. The Dutch never recovered from the defeat and no longer posed a large colonial threat to Bengal Subar. Universities such as the Leiden University, founded in the 16th century, have developed into leading knowledge centers for Southeast Asian and Indonesian studies. Leiden University has produced leading academics such as Christian Snook Hoogrenje, and still has academics who specialize in Indonesian languages and cultures. Leiden University and in particular Keitelfire educational and scientific institutions that to this day share both an intellectual and historical interest in Indonesian studies. Other scientific institutions in the Netherlands include the Amsterdam Tropen Museum, an anthropological museum with massive collections of Indonesian art, culture, ethnography and anthropology. The traditions of the Royal Dutch East Indies Army are maintained by the Regiment Van Hoys of the modern Royal Netherlands Army. A dedicated Brondbeek Museum, a former home for retired Nil soldiers, exists in Arnhem to this day. A specific segment of Dutch literature called, Dutch Indies Literature still exists and includes established authors, such as Louis Cooperus, the writer of The Hidden Force, taking the colonial era as an important source of inspiration. One of the great masterpieces of Dutch literature is the book Max Hovelaar, written by Multatuli in 1860. The majority of Dutchmen that repatriated to the Netherlands after and during the Indonesian Revolution are Indo, native to the islands of the Dutch East Indies. This relatively large Eurasian population had developed over a period of 400 years and were classified by colonial laws belonging to the European legal community. 
In Dutch they are referred to as Indische Nederlanders or as Indo. Including their second-generation descendants, Indos are currently the largest foreign-born group in the Netherlands. In 2008, the Dutch Central Bureau for Statistics registered 387,000 first- and second-generation Indos living in the Netherlands. Although considered fully assimilated into Dutch society, as the main ethnic minority in the Netherlands, these repatriants have played a pivotal role in introducing elements of Indonesian culture into Dutch mainstream culture. Many Indonesian dishes and foodstuffs have become commonplace in the Netherlands. Rijstafel, a colonial culinary concept, and dishes such as nasi goreng and satay are very popular in the country. Practically any town of any size in the Netherlands has a toko or a Chinese-Indonesian restaurant, and many Pasha Malam fairs are organized throughout the year.